Hello everybody and welcome to our first video lecture on Unit 1. In this lecture we will talk about precision, accuracy, and percent error. Please note that this chapter will involve a lot of math, so you need to make sure that you bring your calculator every day to class. You also should have your calculator with you while viewing these video lectures. What is precision and accuracy? A lot of times these two terms are interchangeable, but they really shouldn't be because they both have two different meanings. Accuracy is the closeness of a measurement to the accepted value, which is also known as a standard. So when you're talking about the accuracy of something, you're taking a measurement that you've, that you've taken and you compare it to something that's accepted and already known. Precision, on the other hand, is the closeness of a series of measurements to each other. So with precision, you're going to take a series of data that you've gotten from your lab, and you're going to compare them to each other to see how close they are to one another. And the closer they are, they are to one another, the more precise they are. So even though these are used a lot of times interchangeably, they really do have two separate meanings and it is important that you know the difference between the two. This little picture here, these are to represent dartboards, and this dartboard analogy really will um, hopefully show you the difference between accuracy and precision. Before we go into talking about the four different pictures, it's important that you know that the bullseye here is going to be our accepted value and let's face it it is what we are trying to achieve or get to when playing darts. In our first dart board you'll notice that we have hit our goal of the bullseye but also the darts are all close together. So in this dart board we have accuracy because we've hit the bullseye and we've got precision because the darts are close together. In B, however, we still have great accuracy because we've hit our bullseye, but if you notice, there is now a distance between the darts. So our, our darts are no longer precise because they're not close together. In C, we have not hit our accepted value, so therefore we are not accurate but our darts are close together. So we did have precision in, our, in the C example. Our D example has neither accuracy or precision. We did not hit our bullseye and all of our darts are all over the board. So when you're thinking about precision and accuracy, I hope that you can picture these four different dart boards and remember the difference between the two terms. Now using accuracy and precision in a lab situation, we need to be given a known accepted value. So here in this example, it's, it states that the mass of a substance is known to be 2.9 grams. So this is our accepted value. And then a student in our class performs an experiment and gets these three masses for a substance. The first question asks, are these measurements precise? So you need to think about the term precision and remember that in precision we're going to compare the data to each other. So we're going to look at these three and compare them to each other. And looking at the three, you can tell that they are close, so we can say yes, our measurements are precise. The second question wants to know, are these measurements accurate? If you remember the term accuracy, we're going to take our values and we're going to compare them to the known value. Now, what I suggest doing when you have more than one experimental value is averaging them. So here, if we average these two together, I'm sorry, if we average these three together, add them, to, add them up, we get 7.44 grams. And remember, to average something, 
you sum up the values and then divide by the number of values that you have. So we have three values. So our average is going to be 2.48 grams. So take your 2.48 and compare it to the accepted 2.90. And in this instance, our measurements are not accurate. So no, these are not accurate measurements. So very important to know the difference between the two terms so you know what to compare. When evaluating accuracy, scientists will calculate error and then use that error to calculate percent error. So what is error? Error is the difference between an experimental value and an accepted value. So to calculate it, we're going to take experimental minus accepted value. What might be confusing is what is ex experimental versus accepted. Well, accepted value you're either given or you have to look up experimental value. If you look at the word experimental, you see the word experiment. So your experimental value is the value that you get through your experiments. Once we've calculated our error, we can use it and input it into our percent error formula. So our percent error will be the absolute value of our error divided by the accepted value times 100. Now it's important for you to note that our error, it can be positive or negative depending on what our experimental is compared to our accepted. If our experimental is high, it'll be positive if our experimental value compared to the accepted is low, it'll be negative. But in our percent error, percent error, we do not want a positive. So our, I'm sorry, we do not want a negative. So our percent error will always be positive because we're going to take the absolute value. So take the absolute value of your error. We're going to divide it now by our accepted value, the amount that's given, and multiply by 100 to get a percent. So using our earlier example, we are going to find, first of all, our error, and then we're going to find our percent error. Again, you're going to want to use your average. So this will be 0.7.44 divided by 3, and we said that equaled 2.48 grams. So that's what we're going to use when calculating our error and percent error. So our error, remember, will be our experimental, which is this value, minus our accepted, which is this value. So our 2.48 minus our 2.90. And we are going to get 0.42 grams. Now this will be a negative. That negative indicates that we are below our accepted value by 0.42 grams. Now our percent error, we're going to use this value, but remember we're going to use the absolute value, which is just going to be the positive of that, divided by our accepted of 2.90 times 100 to get our percent. Now this unit would be grams and this unit would be grams and they'd cancel. And we get 14.48 percent. In our class we're going to mark every percent to the tenth place. So we're going to take it to the tenths. So the eight is going to round the four up. So this is going to be 4.5%. Now you might be thinking, well, what about that negative? It just disappears. No, the negative indicates that our experiment was 14.5% lower than 
are accepted. Okay, so our percent error is 14% lower than our accepted. We don't include the negative in our percent, but we can indicate it with words after that. So there you have a quick introduction to precision and accuracy and also an introduction on how to calculate error and percent error. It's important that you have down all of these examples in your notes, the equations in your notes, so that you can go back and practice them. All right, we will do some more practice in class and see you soon.